All right, Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Uh, that's the, the Heavenly Father name in the Hebrew, which is Yahweh. By Hashem stands for in the name of, and Yahweh Shah is the one who the world uh, ignorantly calls Jesus, you know. Yahweh, once again, is the Father, the one who the world ignorantly calls Jehovah. By Hashem stands for in the name of, and Yahweh Shah is the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, you know, the, the, the Father's Son. Now, I want to go on this topic, you know, this quick lesson, you know, hopefully it, it will be quick about how the tribe of Judah is predominantly the American blacks or the so-called Negroes, you know, in North America, you know, predominantly. Um, I got some One West documents, you know, and I was going to pull some scriptures, you know. Well, the, these documents have a lot of scriptures in them, you know. But I wanted to go into this lesson, you know, to hopefully edify brothers out there, you know, on the tribe of Judah. And I was going to go through, you know, Lord willing, Adawan Ratazar, the rest of the 12 tribes, you know, and, you know, break it down. You know, I don't know how, how this is going to go, but I'm going to just go with the spirit, you know. Maybe I'll revisit and, you know, do it better, you know, in the in the future. But we'll see how it goes, you know. But um, basically, I'm going to start off with this picture by we talking about the tribe of Judah, right? Now, according to the scriptures, your bloodline goes by the lineage of your father, okay? I'm going to pull that scripture. You give me a second. Bear with me. Um, this is Numbers. I'm going to get Numbers 1 and 18. Okay, Numbers 1, verse 18. It says, uh, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. According to the numbers, I mean, num the number of their names, from 20 years old and upward by the to by their poles. So basically, your bloodline really goes by your father, you know? Same way where if a man and a woman was to get married, the woman, you know, was to take on the father's last name, and the children are supposed to take on the father's last name. But here in America, the mothers name their children at the at the you know their own last name but that wasn't so according to the bible you know now the lineage of the so-called negroes it goes back to judah which judah is one of the 12 sons of jacob who got his name changed to israel and the word israel israelite it just means from the seed of jacob you know, from the seed of Israel, you know, so Jacob had 12 sons. And if you date or go back in the so-called American Negroes, you go back to their bloodline where it all started. The person who started it would be Judah. You know, Judah was basically the first so-called Negro to put it in lighter terms. You know, so basically, as you can see, Abraham, you know, he had, you know, wives and concubines, but Abraham had Sarah as his wife. Sarah had Isaac, you know, you could go through the scriptures and Isaac, you know, had uh, Rebecca as his wife and Rebecca had, you know, two, two children, uh, Jacob and Esau. Esau is the progenitor of of the so-called white race, you know, and through the 
you, the 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 scriptures we 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 use discernment you know just because somebody has white skin or looks like they're so-called asian that don't mean that they're not from the same bloodline as an israelite you know the the flesh doesn't really profit you you know but that's why we say predominantly the so-called negroes you know so jacob is the progenitor of the so-called negroes latinos and native americans and his 12 children as you go through the bloodline and like i said i'll do videos you know lord willing on the rest of the 12 tribes you know on the so-called negroes latinos and native americans and who they are according to today you know so basically judah was you know one of the 12 sons of jacob okay now, I'm going to go in on this topic. Uh, Judah, right? Middle age names, right? Was Byzantine Empire. This is something that you should look up, you know, going through the history. It says present name, American blacks or Negroes. Okay? Locations, North America and scattered regions of the earth. You know, like predominantly... Uh, you could say western parts of Africa, you know, which I believe this this um, this this uh, document that I have it goes into that, you know. You also have uh, Sicilians, you know, who if, if you look up Sicily, it's a part of Italy, you know, and and a lot of those Sicilians are so-called Negroes, you know, so. I'm going to go right into the lesson, now that that's out the way. It says, uh, the tribe of Judah, American blacks, along with Benjamin and Levi, were sold into captivity by the Africans and the Arabs to the, to the white men. Now, the tribe of Benjamin is the so-called West Indians, and the tribe of Levi are the so-called Haitians. It says, the white man, which is Esau... And the Africans, you know, which are, are Hamites, you know, the, the, the tribe of Judah and the Hamites, the, the, the Africans, so-called Africans, they have different customs. You know, they're not the same people, even though that they have the same skin color. And the, the, the Arabs, they're the so-called Ishmaelites. It says the white man then transported them, the Edomites, uh, then transported them in chains on slave ships to America. To serve hard bondage as slaves. Judah was the fourth born son of Jacob, who got his name changed to Israel. His name means Yahweh's praise, right? Which is Yahweh in the Hebrew. It, it says uh, Genesis 29 to 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now what I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. They came to America in cargo slave ships between the late 1500s to early 1800s. This is Psalms 78 and 2 through 4. It says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, so unto the generation to come the praises of the Lord. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old as prophetic of Christ, which is Yahweh Shah. And Matthew 13 and 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Yahweh Shah explains that unto the masses of Israel, the proper understanding of the scriptures was not given, but rather for them. You know, the, the, the proper understanding of the scriptures was only given to the disciples. You know, everybody is in the disciple. That's why it's a lot of confusion out here in this world. You got people that are trying to teach the Bible that aren't really meant to be teaching. You know, that the Lord didn't send them. 
It says the disciples whose job it was to teach Israel. And Israel is just, you know, another uh, phrase for the 12 tribes, you know, and, and whole. It says guiding them back to the heavenly father through Yahweh Shah, uh, Matthew 10, 5 through 7. You know, you can look that verse up, you know. So basically the disciples job was to, to teach Israel and guide them back to the heavenly father, you know, through Yahweh Shah. You know, now I want to go on this, this quick verse. This is Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox knows his master and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not consider. My people does not consider. I mean, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider. You know, you have a lot of people. You have people over in the land called Israel. Who believe that they're Israelites, right? They believe that they're Israelites, right? They they think that they are, but they aren't. You know, this scripture doesn't apply to them. This scripture applies to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, the, the ox and the ass are two of the dumbest animals in this planet. But the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, they don't know that they're the chosen people. They don't know that they're special. You know, they don't even consider that, they, that they're special. You know, they're considering the fact that those people over there in Israel who call themselves Israelis, not Israelites, that those are the real Jews. But they call themselves Jewish, which the, the I-S-H means pertaining to. You know, they're not the real Jews. They're practicing a religion to be like the certain people who are called Jews, who are the, the word Jew just is simply short for Judah, which is the so-called American blacks. You know, the tribe of Judah are the so-called American blacks, you know. So those people who live in Israel, they stole the lineage and the customs of the so-called black you know, the so-called, real, the real Jews. They stole those people and put them in slavery. It says, we will not hide, back in the document, it says, we will not hide them from their children, so unto the generation to come, the praises of the Lord. It is the disciples' job to teach the true understanding of the Bible in the name of Christ, Yahweh Shah, and not hide the mysteries of the Lord, but instead make it clear to all. Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And we basically are in the last days. Genesis 49 and 8. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise, stands for all the tribes of Israel shall praise the, tri shall praise the tribe of Judah as their leader. And for the oppression that they have endured under the white man, which are the, the so-called Edomites, which is Jacob's brother, as you can see. Um, it says, uh, for the oppression that they have endured under the white man. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies for many decades. The American blacks have risked their lives fighting with America's political system for justice, equality, housing, desegregation, jobs, and ed education. They've marched for miles, held vigils, boycotted, fought against law enforcement, resulting in thousands of them being burnt, lynched, hosed, attacked by dogs, clubbed, whipped, raped, sodomized, firebombed, etc. By Judah's hand, being in the neck of his enemies, the white man, which are the Edomites, he has choked the American political system for all kinds of, for all kinds of benefits. You know? So when that scripture said that Judah's hand 
being in the neck of his enemies in Deuteronomy, I mean Genesis 49, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. That means that the so-called uh, Negroes, you know, they choked up the political system for all kind of benefits, you know, like like the 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 uh, food stamps, you know, Section Eight, you know. Those type of things. It says, as the American blacks begin to wake up and return to the Lord is Judah. They are choking the lives of America's education, educational and religious institution by teaching the truth of the Bible, proving Christ, which his real name is Yahweh Shah, is black and only died for the nation of Israel. And that the so-called Negro and Indian scattered throughout the Americas are Israelites. The neck of thine enemies is also giving you the geographic, geographical location of the tribe of Judah, which is North America, right? Now, I'm going to go, I got a scripture for that. Um, this is Jeremiah uh, 17 and 4. It's, uh, it says, and thou, which is you, it says, even yourself shall discontinue from your heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which thou knowest not, which is America. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Okay? Now... This is Zechariah 2 and 6 through 7. It says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, North America. You know, which, you know, if you read that scripture, that's what that means. It says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon, which the daughter of Babylon is America. If you read Jeremiah 16, 14 through uh, 15. Psalms 137 uh, 7 through 8 it says remember O Lord the children of Edom O daughter of Babylon it says these, pro these prophetic scriptures tell us the people of Edom the so called white people are the daughter of Babylon in North, North America and Judah would dwell there in captivity now we're continuing on Genesis 49 and 8b right it says, Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. In the end, all the tribes of Israel shall praise and bow down before Judah, the so-called American Negroes. It says, Because they will acknowledge that Judah is the head tribe. It says, um, This is just breaking down, you know, Genesis 49. You know, it's Zechariah 12 and 7. It says, The Lord also shall Save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. And when you go into the scriptures, you had certain guys, you know, that were uh, like like King David. You know, he was a so-called um, Negro. He, if he was here today, you know, which he is according to the scriptures, you know. Most likely he's here, you know. It says, um, it says, he, 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 well, basically he would be from the tribe of Judah, you know. Uh, the, the, well, he is from the tribe of Judah, my bad. King David is from the tribe of Judah. So he would be a so-called Negro if he was here today, okay. Um, it says, uh, it says, the Lord so also saved the tents of Judah first that the glory of of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Jerusalem. I mean, Ju Judah. Although the American blacks have fought for many causes and brought about much change to the, change to the benefit of all the other tribes of Israel, better schooling through integration, better jobs, better housing, and many other benefits, all the tribes of Israel mock and look down on American black. The West Indian blacks, Haitians, the House of David, Puerto Ricans, and the Mexican inhabitants of Jerusalem. 
belittle and insult the American blacks, calling them lazy, thieves, no good bums, stupid, etc. And that's basically what, you know, a lot of those people are, the, the, the American Negroes. It says, therefore, the Lord promised that he will save Judah first by giving him the understanding of the scriptures to teach and gather the other tribes of Israel under Yahweh Shah. There, thereby, all Israel will acknowledge Judah as the head tribe. Genesis 49 and 9. It says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. And there's an old lion who shall rouse him up. Right? It says, Judah is a lion's whelp. Meaning the tribe of, tribe of Judah is like a young lion, powerful and fearless. From the prey, my son, thou art, art gone up. Just like a young lion cub is hunting his prey and then gives up the hunt and becomes distracted, right? That's the same way when um, the so-called white man, you know, kills somebody in the streets, you know? You got a lot of the, the, the tribe of Judah, the American Negroes, you know, like the Baltimore Rise. Those people, they went crazy over that. But then when... The so-called white man said that they was going to uh, indict the officers. The people got distracted from that. You know, it says the prey is the enemies, the white man and all the other nation. It says, but Judah has left, gone after the prey, leaving the truth of the Bible and becoming, I mean, and became distracted, tricked by the philosophies of his enemies. Religion, Christianity, Muslim, etc., crime, selling drugs, killing each other, integration. Thereby he has ceased from the hunt of his enemies. He stooped down, meaning just as a lion stoops down with intentions to attack and devour his prey. Likewise, in the 40s and 50s, the American blacks stooped down, formed various organizations to consider devouring the so-called white man for the injustice and oppression they have suffered. He couched as a lion, meaning just as a lion couches about to attack to devour his prey, so did the American blacks. In the late 50s and 60s, they formed militant groups, no longer passive marches of protest, but now carrying weapons in the direct defiance of local law officials. It was time for kill or be killed. Eye for an eye, two for a two. It was time for a revolution. And during this era, it appeared as if the American blacks would devour their enemies. There's an old lion, Judah, this young powerful lion, was distracted from his purpose by infiltration and in drugs in the black community. As an old lion gets tired and gives up the hunt, so did the various black militant groups. Infiltration and drug addiction caused Judah to lay down arms and become complacent in society. This was a diabolical plot by the Illuminati, the CIA, and the FBI. Who shall rouse them up? Right? It says, only the Most High can rouse up the spirit of the American blacks to return onto him is Judah and take his position as the head tribe of the nation of Israel. In Zechariah 12 and 7, the Most High promised to rouse Judah up by saving his tents first by the proper understanding of the Bible. This is Revelation 11 and 11. It says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. You can also read Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. It says three days and a half is symbolic for 350 years when the bulk of the slaves were brought into the hands of America in 1620. If you read Daniel 7 and 25, 360, 350 years after the 1620 brings us to 1970. It was in 1970 when the truth began to be taught concerning who the American blacks were, the real Jews. 
The spirit of life from God entered, entered into them, meaning the proper understanding of the Bible began to be taught in the name of Yahweh Shah. Uh, John 6 and 63. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. Therefore, the true knowledge which come through faith in Yahweh Shah, right, the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that is the spirit of life from God. It says Genesis 49 and 10, right? And I'll post the the, the document, you know, or, or matter of fact, if any if anybody needs the document, you can just, you know, uh, message me and, you know, I'll send it to you, you know. Uh, it says, uh, Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Salah come. And all to him shall the gathering of the people be. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, meaning the, the rulership shall not depart from the tribe of Judah. The king of kings will come from Judah which is Yahweh Shah. It says, uh, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, meaning the high priest shall come from the seed of Judah. Until Salah comes, Salah means peaceable, which is Yahweh Shah. Read Hebrews uh, chapter 7. It explains how Yahweh Shah is after the, the order of Melchizedek, king of peace, as well as our high priest. Until Shalal comes, properly translated, says, when Shalal comes. Prior to the coming of Yahweh Shah, it was the tribe of Levi, which are the Haitians, that held the scepter, rulership, ever since the, the, the days of the Maccabees. During the ministry of Yahweh Shah, the high priest, Siaphis, a Levite, if you read John 8 and 13, 18 and 13, the historian of Flavius Josephus records how Levi governed Israel under Roman rule. However, when Yahweh Shah came, the scepter was handed to the tribe of Judah. Right? And as you see, is you know, it says scepter promises. You know? The the the, the, the scepter promises was given to the tribe of Judah from, you know, this, it was a prophecy, you know, from Jacob. Jacob prophesied that the the tribe of Judah will have the scepter promises. It says, um, however, when Yahweh Shai came, the scepter was handed to the tribe of Judah, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, meaning unto Yahweh Shai shall the gathering of Israel be. You know, because our people, you know, we so lost, you know, the, the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, the ones who um, the world in only cause Jesus came for, you know, and, and we're he's the only one. The only way that these people can really be united, you know, in, in righteousness. This is Jeremiah 12 and 7. It says the Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. Therefore, Judah would be the first teachers of the Lord leading Israel unto Yahweh Shah. This also proves the 12 tribes of Israel cannot be gathered except through Yahweh Shah. It says, um, it says, uh, Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteousness serve shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Acts ten and thirty six. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahweh Shah. The leaders of the Jews said this concerning uh Yahweh Shah. So the Lord basically sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace unto them through Yahweh Shah. You know, Yahweh Shah was that mediator. You know, for us to get, he is the mediator for us to get back to the Father. You know, we follow his example. 
This is John 11 and 48. If we let him thus alone, all men Israelites, all men which are the Israelites will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. The Romans are another sect of the Edomites. It says um, this verse was prophetic in, in Genesis 49 and 10. When Yahweh came and died for the sins of Israel, then was resurrected in the year 70 A.D. I mean, yeah, in, in the year 70 A.D., the Romans laid siege against Israel, taking away afterwards both the place of Judah is the religious leaders in their nation, leading them into captivity. And that's when our people fled into the western parts of Africa. You know, in 70 A.D., you know, to escape the Roman uh, persecution. You know, it says, uh, And unto him shall the gathering of people be. The him is Jehoshaphat of the tribe of Judah. So the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he was from the tribe of Judah. And he's a so-called Negro, according to the scriptures, when you go deeper into it. It says, And elect leaders of Judah, which is the, the disciples, prophesied to aid in gathering the nation of Israel under Yahweh Shah. This is Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord, Yahweh Shah, sprang out of Judah. Right? Now, I, I can go deeper into this, you know, but I'll rather, you know, let... Uh, you know, you guys go through and, you know, read the rest of them, you know. But with that said, I'm going to go get, you know, some scriptures, you know, proving even further how the so-called Negroes are, you know, the tribe of Judah, you know. Um, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee you shall see it no more again but there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you right and when you look into the scripture nobody else went into slavery with ships other than the so-called Negroes Okay, and that was a promise that the Lord made, you know, it was a prophecy that the Lord gave to us because our people went off, you know, and we were the ones that were sold onto our enemies for bond men and bond women, not the people who, who call themselves Israel or Israelites, you know, or Israeli, you know, the only people that went through this is the so-called Negroes. And no man shall buy you. Right? No, that's that's one of the reasons why we're still in slavery. You know, the scriptures talk about the second coming of the one who the world ignorantly called Jesus. You know? He's going to come back and he's going to save us. But he's not coming back as a man. You know? And, you know, th that's when the, the people of Israel are going to be saved. Because right now we're not saved, you know, we're still um, slaves, you know, according to the society. So once our people wake up and get back in order and realize that they're the, the tribe of Judah or whatever tribe of Israel that they come from, that's when the Lord will come back, you know. I have a scripture on that, you know, and I'll end it on that. This is Matthew 24 and 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And once this word gets out, you know, because this, 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 this thing said, we're scattered across all the regions of the earth. You know, we're just predominantly, the so-called Negroes are predominantly in America, North America, you know, 
tribe of the tribes of Israel are predominantly here on this side, but we're also scattered across the round the, the the other parts of the earth. And once this doctrine, once the, the, the gospel, the real gospel of the kingdom is preached all over the world, that's when the end will come. You know? And that's when we will be in our kingdom, you know, and 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 having everlasting life, you know, our loved ones will come back in their right mind, you know, and basically that's the the sum of the lesson, you know. Hopefully, you guys was edified. Like I said, if you need the 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 um, document, you know, I can send it to you, and I'll um, you know, Lord willing get back to the rest of the um, the 12 tribes, you know, the other uh, 12, you know, that are out there, you know. But, um, yeah, with that, hopefully you guys been edified. want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. And it's a shit, shalom, to the Akim out here that's doing and pushing the work and truth and in sincerity. Shalom,